Gosh, it's only been a week and I've missed you all so much already. If you're new to the Safety Powered YouTube channel or new to our services, I'm Jake Wolfenden with Summit Safety Group and I do these videos each week to keep you informed on what you need to know from an OSHA compliance standpoint, but more importantly, challenging you on the way you view your employees, the hazards you and your team are surrounded by, and your overall safety culture. The past couple weeks, I've challenged you on those very points, so in case you missed them, I highly encourage you to go back and check those out on our Summit Safety Group YouTube channel. That being said, this week I'm bringing it back full circle to a handful of important effective dates you need to be aware of regarding OSHA 2017 law changes. I'll be presenting them by law and not necessarily by the earliest effective date since a couple have multiple dates associated with them. So without further ado, allow me to present those to you now. The very first law that went into effect began January 1st. It is the anti-retaliation law, which is what houses the new drug screening mandates, the new whistleblower rules, revived emphasis on evaluating safety incentive programs, and of course, the new record keeping laws. The second rule that took effect pertains to general industry only, and that is the new rule on walking working surfaces. That effective date was January 17th. That being said, as I mentioned in a previous video that only highlighted this final ruling, there will be many additions to this law that are ushered in over time. The very first of these implementations has to do with the deadline to have your employees trained on fall and equipment hazards, which is a deadline of June 17th. Okay, moving right along into the OSHA 300 logs. If you haven't already, you need to have a hard copy version of your OSHA 300A log placed in a conspicuous location within your facility where all employees can have visual access to its data. The date range for keeping this hung up is February 1st to April 30th. Please don't confuse this with the electronic submission of the 300A logs. Those are due via electronic submission by July 1st. And a reminder, that's for all companies 20 employees and up within OSHA's list of high hazard industries. Next up, we have that pesky element from the periodic table of elements known as beryllium. The date to be in full compliance with this is quickly approaching, and that is March 10th. That means you must have a baseline air sample to know whether or not you are in compliance with the dramatic tenfold decrease in allowable exposure time. So March 10th on beryllium. Keeping on the topics on the respiratory hazards, uh, the big five-fold decrease in allowable exposure time for silica is coming up on June 23rd. This, this date is only representative of the construction industry as general industry won't be effective until 2018. So again, be sure you have your baseline air sampling done that is measured by these new personal exposure limits. Silica for construction, June 23rd. The final noteworthy change at this time also has to do with the construction industry and it's regarding the new crane standard for qualified versus certified operators. OSHA has until November 10th to determine whether this law will go into effect. Of all these effective dates for 2017, I could see this being one that gets pushed back under the new Trump administration. The respiratory ones are based on facts they have had for decades and they needed to be changed due rightfully to protect the workers. The new crane standard starts to get a little bit more political in my, in my mind at least. So take that for what it's worth, but regardless, we shall all find out together in the very near future. So to leave you, I am posting a timeline in order of each of the effective dates we have covered and what you need to be prepared for in 2017. I'm Jake Wolfenden with Summit Safety Group, and I may not know you, but I do care about you. I will see you next week.